the Lord, to be able to bless the Lord our God, our Savior, our risen King, our healer, our deliverer, our maker. Come on, I'm talking about our God. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the one who shed his blood for us on Calvary's cross. I'm talking about the one who loves us so much that he'll leave the 99 just to go and seek us out as the one. We're talking about Jesus. Jesus. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm so excited because God is truly doing a mighty work in this house. And I'm excited about the majesty and the power of God and how he is working within us to change us, to transform us, and to lead us in the way of righteousness. Today we are here to worship the name of Jesus. You ought to be excited about it. Because every single time that we get to enter into God's house, it is a time to be glad. So we want to just lift up the name of Jesus we're going to open in scripture and in prayer. We're going to allow the spirit of the Lord to just flood in this place. Now, here's what I need from everybody. I need the power of agreement. You can turn it up a little bit. I need the power of agreement. Amen. As the readers come to read the scripture and to pray, I want you to allow your spirit to connect with what they're saying. Don't just listen to it. But let your spirit connect with it. That we all together might be able to pray to our Father as one body. Because even though we are many, he hears us as one when we're in agreement. And we want God to flood this place. Is there anybody who wants God to flood this place? Anybody who needs to be filled up in some areas? So I'm going to ask uh, Sister Alfini and Sister Stacy to come. And they're going to lead us in prayer and in scripture, and our hearts are going to be postured in agreement. Amen? Amen. Good morning, good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we rejoice in Amen. I want to say good morning to Pastor Ramey, ministers, deacons, church family, and friends. God is so good. Every form of malice. That's right. And my favorite verse 32. All right. Be kind. 
and compassion to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God gave you. So we want to take away from this, not for the specialists of today, for the graduation for the ministers. That's union. And we're thanking to God to bring us with one accord. Because if we have unity, we look different, we smell different, we walk different, we act different, we are different. Oh, God. Oh, 
announcements. Um, so we're gonna ask Sister Kathleen to come on forward. Oh! 
May a blessing be added to the reading of God's word. These things and all things I pray in the mighty, natural name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let the body of Christ say, Amen. transition to our music ministry and the next voice you will hear after that will be Pastor Amen. Amen.
we just had a good time sitting at, sitting at the table and eating. And, and Brother John Woolfolk said, um, if you don't pay that bill, you ain't going to get a ride back to the church. I paid the bill. I'm just playing. And Dickie Scott, he just said that. He said, you know what? Uh, we're having such a good time. He said, we just thank Pastor Randy for inviting us all out to breakfast. And I said, wait a minute, it's breakfast and, and bread or lunch. I said, this is breakfast. But we had a good time in our fellowship. And we're just looking forward to more things that the Lord is going to do with us in fellowship. Brace yourself. On next Sunday, starting next Sunday, starting next Sunday, we're going to do our offering just a little bit different. Next Sunday, we're going to walk around the table. We're going to walk around the table like we used to. And I want you to know something because uh, several Maybe several months ago, it was shared with me that we had a deficit. And I think that that deficit was about $14,000 at that time. And I asked the question, what would be the difference in us bringing our offering or just putting our offering in the basket? I think there were about four Sundays that I had my money, my offering, in my pocket and I went home with it. Because I forgot. I didn't go back in the back and drop my money in the basket. I forgot. And I didn't make up for it the next week either. I'm, I'm being transparent. And then there were a couple Sundays that I, I pulled Brother Massey aside, I pulled somebody else, I said, hey, put my money in the back, I forgot to put my money in. And so they did that for me. And I'm grateful. Y'all did put it in, right? <laughs> but today, starting next week, just be prepared. We're going to walk around the table. And even if you give your money online, that's going to be fine too. I still want you to walk around the floor. We're going to get some exercise, some Holy Ghost exercise on that. Amen. We just want to, because we're going to move next, we're going to move in that building next door. We're going to build that building next door. Amen. Well, I got seven hand claps on this side. We're going to build that building next door. God is going to fulfill his promise to us that we become faithful and do the things that he wants us to do. Those things will be fulfilled. I'm not going to preach long today, I promise you. So this afternoon, this afternoon, we're having our first afternoon worship service at 3 o'clock. And we're going to be honoring uh, and licensing uh, the ministers in Salem Baptist Church. Amen. I would like for all of us, after worship today, to go downstairs and have lunch. We have a meal prepared for everybody. So you don't have to go home. You don't have to go home. But if you do go home, you make sure you come back. Amen. So we're doing that this afternoon, and then on the fourth Sunday, on the fourth Sunday, we're going to repeat this uh, same incident because on the fourth Sunday, we're going to have a welcome home service for all of the ones, all of us who belong to Siloam. We want to invite everybody to come back to Siloam on the fourth Sunday. Amen. Amen. And I have, we have a, a, an invited guest 
to come and, and share the word of God with us. Now on the fourth Sunday, even though there are foods prepared, I don't know what your favorite dish is, but it's a potluck. I don't like that word. But anyhow, uh, we're going to have, bring your favorite dish, and uh, we're going to have a soul food eating on next, on the fourth Sunday. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm going to fuss just a little bit, just a little bit. Don't let my guests come, our guests come, and we stay home. When I invite folks, I, 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 want, I want us to be home. Amen? Amen. Amen. I, I don't want it to be, it to be more of them than, than, than us. Amen. And we have a special treat for this Sunday. And then uh, my good friend from Coatesville, uh, Pastor Montez O. Jones, will be here to preach for us even on the fourth Sunday. Amen. Amen. I need a favor. I'm going to preach in about three minutes here. Sister Sherry had to leave. Sister Sherry Davis had, had, had to leave. I think everybody knows about her mom. You know when you get that call, she had to go see about mom. So will you guide me here just for a moment? We want to lift up Sister Sherry and her mother. Father, in Jesus' name. God, you know more of everything than we could ever know. Intercede even right now. Whatever the situation is, God. We're asking you to take care of it. Yes. Let no ill come to this situation, God. In the name of Jesus. Father, you're a great coverer and a great protector. We ask God that you'll do it even right now. Right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, as we go further into this worship experience. I ask God that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in your sight, for you indeed are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. 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 I didn't ask Minister Teresa to read for me today because everything is just going so smooth. But this is part three of Luke chapter 24. Luke the 24 chapter. Two verses in that chapter, verses 28 and 29. Luke chapter 24, verses 28 and 29. Would you stand with me just for a moment? While we're standing, Brother Greg stole my thunder. Pastor West is in the house, and we do thank the Lord for him. Amen. Amen. Pastor and Sister West are both here. Praise God for all of our deacons being here. Having Deacon Sanders back in the house. Amen. Amen. St. Luke chapter 24, verses 28 and 29. And they drew nigh unto the village where they went. And he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. You may be seated. I'm going to talk this afternoon as the Lord shall guide from this thought. Come on over to my place. Come on over to my place. And as the 
so top here. <laughs> going from resignation to recognition. But come on over to my place. I need you to do me a favor, though, to elevate, elevate your thinking just a little bit. Because I know immediately some of, some of you were thinking about that song that Teddy Pendergrass wrote. <laughs> some lyrics and pen this song with the title, Come On Over, to my place. He was talking about I don't feel like being lonely tonight. I'm not going any further with that because y'all be up here swaying. Y'all be saying, come on over to my place. No, we ain't going to do that today. because of what had happened in Jerusalem. You remember that Jesus, truly he was crucified. He had been in the grave. But now because of what he promised, he is now walking, he is now talking with the two men on the road to Emmaus. Can I tell you that their conversation was very lengthy? So much so that it was getting late in the evening. And now after walking these last seven miles, and the time had passed by so quickly, they realized it was getting late. And now these two men, after walking along together for this distance, they invited this total stranger and say to him, come on over to my house. If I could invite you, if I would invite you over to my house, you could expect my house is going to be welcoming. You can expect coming over to my house that the house is going to be inviting enough that there's food in the refrigerator. When I invite you over to my house, you can best believe that you only get to be a guest in my house for 15 minutes. <laughs> How long? 15 minutes. And then after those 15 minutes are over, your family. Oh, y'all missed that totally. <laughs> you see what happens in my house? I'll give you a short tour. I'll show you where the bathrooms are. I'll show you around the house. And then after that, don't ask me to get you something. I'll, ask, I'll tell you where the refrigerator is. I might even invite you to the stove. But you can best believe when you get to Randy's house, there's going to be food on the table. There's going to be plenty of Pepsi. There's going to be Gatorade in the closet. But in, in Doc's house, you're going to like it at my house. What time you come over? Come on over. Can I just tell you that? Come on over to my house. Because my house is just that way. When, when, when the house was built, I, I dedicated that house to God. Amen. And I can tell you, I can tell you, I can tell you, I can tell you that that house has been blessed Amen. ever since I've been in it. Amen. But these men, these men, these strangers that came in the house, he had been listening about these things, listening about how their disappointments of Christ 
not fulfilling their hopes and desires and even their thoughts is coming to the house to share an evening meal. And can I tell you that after arriving at their house, things began to change. Remember during their walk, they told this stranger how they had hoped when Jesus first arrived on the scene that their dreams of him conquering the world conquering the world as they believed dashed in a moment. The moment that he was killed, the moment that he was buried, and the moment that he was taken away from them. And truly he had been in the grave, but now because of what he promised, he now, he's now walking and talking with them, with these two men on the road to Emmaus. Can I tell you that conversation had been so long that they decided that you need a rest. They were walking. They were talking. They got to the point and they said, why don't you come visit us at our house? And Jesus would have gone a little further. But they constrained him. The Bible says they asked him, stop for a little while and rest. Come to the house. You know how it is with us as family. Things don't always feel good. But somehow, sometimes, when you get to the house, Brother John, the conversation can change in a moment. The feelings can be changed in a moment. Sometimes the sadness that is being experienced can be changed just like that. How can it be changed sometimes in just putting your arm around somebody? Sometimes just a kind word can change the whole dynamics of the moment. They had been crying. They were worried about Jesus. They had been worried about their Savior having taken away from them and nobody knew where he was. But here it is now. They, they knew that Jesus had been crucified. They knew he had been buried. And now he had been resurrected. Yes. Hallelujah. Even though they were sad in their spirit, they knew that, 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 that just going home, just going home, would make a difference. So at this moment, Jesus was entering into the home. I can imagine in my mind that he spoke some soft words. He spoke a word or two that cheered them up. Just with us going home sometime, when mama put her arm around me, she said, boy, it's going to be all right. Yes. I don't know what it is about a mama's touch or a mother's touch, but, but just saying, baby, it's going to be all right. Yes. Anybody in here know that it'll brighten up your day? Yes. Remember, remember that Jesus had transformed himself that nobody recognized him. Yes. But when they finally recognized it was Jesus, the cobwebs of the mind began to go away. When you, my brothers and sisters, recognize that it's Jesus, he can take away all of your disappointments. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. When you recognize that it's Jesus, your dark days will 
become sunshiny days. Remember that these men have been living in the words of we had hoped. When they recognized in that moment of who this could have been, now their hopes may have been seen that they seem to be dashed, but now they can hope again. Y'all miss that. Now that they know that it's Jesus, they can hope again. Remember, remember, remember that Jesus brings hope, he brings life, he brings excitement, he brings happiness to our lives. So now, so now, these two men who didn't have any hope, who didn't have anything to look forward to, yes, they had, Jesus had been crucified. That was unexpected and hard to accept. But now, clearly beyond their wildest expectations, Jesus has been raised from the dead. This same Jesus, somebody help me say, same Jesus, turns in with them to have this evening meal. And it is during that meal when the Lord offers a blessing over the food. The blessing of the food and that they finally realize who this is. They finally realize what the real who this is. Who this is. Who have been walking with them. Anybody in here ever recognize it's been Jesus who's been lifting you up? One of the hardest things for you and me when somebody dies in our house. It's hard to recognize at times that Jesus is holding us. Our minds just go haywire. Oh, but Jesus, who we know is the light of the world. It was when Jesus blessed the food that they now recognize that Jesus is truly alive. Can I get you excited for 10 seconds and tell you that the grave couldn't hold him? Yeah. <laughs> 
But he said, hear us.
Regina. He's coming, he's coming by Christian experience. All right. All right. And as you heard her attest to, she's joining Siloam. So she's part of the
happy for everybody being here today. Thank God for, for all of our new, new members. And for all of us, all of us who have been in Salon for a few days, a few weeks, a few months, a few years, continue to welcome all of our family members. Remember on the fourth Sunday, fourth Sunday is come on back to Salon Day. If you know somebody who was a member and they're just not going anywhere, tell them to come on home. We'll have a good old fashioned uh, meal downstairs, pop luck. I mean, yeah, we're gonna have a good meal downstairs. And I've already I've already um, told Sister Andy that uh, for those that are bringing a dish, remember we have over we're gonna have about 150 folk here next week. We get the next. Amen. So don't bring one can of beans. <laughs> Sister Downey downstairs, better get situated first. That don't mean you're going to eat first. 